I'm in the Botanic Gardens in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And Brazil is unusual as it's one of the few countries that is named after a tree. When the Portuguese came first to Brazil in 1500, 500 years ago, more than 500 years ago, they found this tree which they called Brazil wood. And the reason they were interested in this tree was because inside it contains a red dye. Now, the tree had been known already, or relatives, you could find it in Asia, but it was very expensive. And here in Brazil, there were huge numbers of these trees, and they started a whole industry shipping these, the wood across to Europe. And it was so valuable that there were pirates who tried to capture the ships and so on. But by the 18th century, they'd cut down so many trees that it was becoming rare and the industry was collapsing. And the dye inside is now called Brazilin. You can't see anything inside this tree. There's some nice other plants growing on it. it looks really quite decorative. But if we go over here, I found another tree where you can see inside. I'm not sure whether this is natural or whether it just grew like this, but you can see here the red colour. To get it out, they used to grind the tree up essentially to make sawdust. And then after that, it was extracted, often with an inorganic salt like alum, which is a mixed aluminium salt with another metal. The dye is not a terribly complicated molecule. It has a couple of benzene rings and some, another ring in the middle. And it now has a more boring name, Natural Red 24. But it's the sort of dye that is known as a lake dye. What that means is that when you dye cloth, it doesn't react with the fibre but you have to use some sort of inorganic material which precipitates and the dye is absorbed on the surface. These are the sort of dyes which when you wash the clothes, the colour sometimes comes out. And depending on the chemical you use to precipitate it, so the colour changes slightly, so it could be red or a bit purple. But I think that originally one of the major uses was to dye velvet and because it was a luxury fire cloth and so you have a luxury dye to go with it. Nice red velvet, you can imagine me in a red velvet jacket. So I think this tree has two very important points for us in the 21st century. It makes a valuable product, this dye, but there isn't enough trees to make dye to satisfy the demand. So one needs to make this dye chemically so you can get the same material but without cutting down the trees. The trees are now quite well preserved. You have to get special permission to cut one down. And here it is, like in a museum in the botanic gardens. But there's another problem, that the wood from this tree is very good for making the bows of violins. So you imagine me playing a violin with a bow made of this wood. And the properties of wood differ from one tree to another. And we still don't really understand how to make materials that have the same properties as some woods. So what this tree reminds us is that there's still a lot for chemists to learn how to make materials with the properties we want. But it's still a very nice tree as well. This is just one tree in a huge country. And the rainforest still has many species that have been barely catalogued, let alone looking at the chemicals that come out of these trees. And it's very important before all the trees are cut down that we find out what the chemicals are because they could be so valuable as pharmaceuticals or as new dyes or molecules with new properties. And in fact, I'm already understanding that much of Brazilian chemistry, the chemistry done by chemists here in Brazil, 
is focused on looking and understanding these natural products that come from this huge richness of plants that grow in this country. I was taking a picture because my wife is very interested in plants and unfortunately she couldn't come here so I've taken a picture to show her the tree. 